All right, let me explain what's happening this time because in my past videos, people haven't understood quite. I'm only gonna be receiving the ISS. They're gonna have a school contact with a school in Indiana, and I'll be receiving just the astronaut side of the transmission, and that should be starting right now. It's gonna be a little bit, we're gonna about miss, it's gonna start about a minute later here where I am. Um, and I have printed out the questions. They send them out publicly as a press release ahead of time. So I'm gonna read them aloud. So I won't actually be talking to the astronaut unless I get really lucky and they call for random stations afterward, which is unlikely. But anyway, here we go. 53, 44. All right. I heard something there for a sec. Japanese astronaut. Thank you. Uh, actually, it's really uh, hard to find the uh, thing. Uh, if you drop something on the ground, I mean, you can look up the, on the floor or on the ground, but uh, ISS, because of the zero gravity, uh, things go away. So it's really hard to find things. I forgot my piece of paper. Let me get it out real quick. Nervous. Here, let me grab that for you. Go back to Earth. Uh, well, thanks, Jim. Here, I'll just hold it. That was a little embarrassing. Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, we have emails and also IP phone, like a telephone. And also, sometimes we can do the like a TV conference, so we don't feel lonely. Over. Thank you. That was what? When you're in space, do you have some kind of communication so you can talk to your family or friends? The next question is, what would you do if the whole space station shut down? Oh, thank you for the question. Uh, that's a really good question. Hopefully, that things not happen. But if such kind of things happen, we may need to go back to Earth by using Soyuz. Over. Um, the next question is, are any of you trying to make a device that would allow for some type of gravity on the space station? Thank you for the question. We have small equipment uh, which can produce uh, gravity type by using the centrifuge, but that is really small, But so that is only for the plant, plant experiment. Over. The next question is, what is the first thing you want to do when you get home, when you get home? Since we don't have any shower here, I would like to take a shower. Over. Thank you. Out of all the time you have spent in the ISS, what is the worst thing that has happened? I don't have anything worse thing happened right now. Uh, I'm really lucky, but maybe I lost something like important. That was the worst thing. <laughs> Thank you. Over. What would you do if somebody accidentally pushed a button with his foot and you have no idea what button was pushed? This is my favorite question. Good question. First, we need to confirm what uh, button was pressed and think about uh, with crew members and also ground. Thank you. Over. Have you ever had a meteor hit the station? Thank you for the question. Not only the meteor, but uh, like a small spot Space debris uh, actually hit the station, but we have sealed, so no problem. Over. Thank you. Do you ever get bored? Uh, we have really nice view uh, the Earth, so I never bored. Get bored. Thank you. Why does being an astronaut require such a high education? Thank you for the question, because we have a lot of uh, training uh, training in order to become an astronaut or in order to fly, but we have, we in, in order to understand what we are going to learn, we need more like a math or scientific knowledge. So that's why. Thank you. Over. Part of the ISS gets destroyed, are there a good question? 
Actually, each module has、uh, hatches, so if, in case of emergency, we can close the door. So、uh, that's how、uh, ISS works. Thank you. Over. That was if part of the ISS gets destroyed, are there emergency doors to keep everything from getting sucked out? Next, what is the most amazing thing you have ever seen at your job for the ISS? Thank you for the question. The view from the window,、uh, Earth. That is an amazing view, and that is a really great thing to see. So that、uh, over. Thank you. Next question, 15 out of 20. Can you see the Hubble telescope from the space station? About the peak elevation, 23 degrees. That's a good question. If timing is good, I think I, we can see that, but、uh, I haven't seen that before. I'm going to try next time. Thank you. Over. If the connection from the space station to mission control would break, what would happen? Thank you for the question.、Uh, if it's a short period of time, we can、uh, manage that kind of problem. But if it's long, like a day or two days, that's going to be a really big problem. Thank you. Over. Next question. How long does it take you to regain all your physical ability when you, become, when you come back to Earth? Thank you for the question.、Uh, usually it takes like、uh, six weeks or maybe four weeks to six weeks to,、uh, you know, to recover. Thank you. Over. If in the ISS, is the oxygen recycled continually or do the spacecraft delivering new supplies or crew bring up new oxygen canisters? Thank you for the question.、Uh, actually, both.、Uh, we are recycling、uh, oxygen partly and also generating oxygen by using uh, water uh, so, and also electricity. But also, we're going to have like a tank or also canister to resupply by using a cargo vehicle. Thank you. Over. 19 out of 20. Do any of Newton's laws of motion not hold on the ISS? That's a really interesting question, but Newton's law always works in here.、Uh, even we can really noticeable、uh, if we throw something,、uh, con continuously go,、uh, I mean, forever. So that means like、uh, Newton's law work also working here as well. Thank you. Over. The next question actually originally was about if you can drink alcoholic drinks, but it's now what type of beverages do you drink in space and do you use special、uh, containers? We cannot drink uh, carbon, uh, like uh, soda or like a Coke on orbit because、uh, it is really hard to remove uh, CO2, uh, carbon dioxide,、uh, on the orbit. Thank you. Over. That's it. That was 20 questions. We missed the first several.、They're、I will be on orbit for five months, but right now,、uh, Scott Kerry, US astronaut, is staying here for a year.、Uh, that's going to be a really long mission. Thank you. Over. Got more questions apparently. A few more minutes in the pass. A couple more. They might be clearing off now, saying goodbye. Oh, thank you very much for kind words.、Uh, I actually really enjoy it.、Uh, since I'm Japanese. English. So I'm sorry for the bad English, but I definitely want to visit your I mean,、uh, city and your、uh, school. That way I can communicate with you and I can learn English. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is、uh, November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra、uh, 93. Done. See, so、uh, we heard a Japanese astronaut. I forgot to look up his name. And anyway, so that was、um, a Japanese astronaut talking with a school in Indiana. And it's a school that has three different you know, levels elementary, middle, high school. And they had some great questions. The one about pushing a button with your foot I thought was particularly interesting and funny. And he just handled it seriously, which is. You know what a, an astronaut should do. So, but, and then the last question that I had printed out was originally, like I said, they listed the press release said、um, 
do you have alcoholic beverages on the space station or, if, or can you drink alcoholic beverages, do you have any, etc. And they changed that to like a generic question about uh, drinks and what kind of containers you put them in, that sort of thing. So um, I'm not surprised they did that, but it would have been great to hear the answer. Um, I feel like I read once about Mir, how they, the Russians had vodka, I guess, I don't know if that's a stereotype or if it was actually true. Um, so, yep, that was a successful reception of the International Space Station speaking with a school in Indiana. Um, I was receiving it with my Aero 2 satellite antenna, just using the two meter elements on it. Um, there's actually um, separate shorter elements for 70 centimeters, and I didn't, didn't screw those on because I didn't need them. It makes it heavier, so if I keep it lighter, it's easier to hold with one hand or whatever. It doesn't wear me out as quickly. And let's see, so it's a beautiful day out here in Raleigh, North Carolina on top of Trash Mountain. Uh, that's what we affectionately call it. It's actually called the North Wake Landfill District Park and it's in North Raleigh. And yeah, just check out the view. It's pretty nice. So this is off in the uh, east over here and, and we did a pass, like I said, it's with Indiana. So we're on the east coast, so we're basically uh, the, the peak um, elevation of this pass was 23 degrees north-northwest, straight behind me. And um, it started off over here, I guess that would be in the south, southwest or something like that. And it ended over in the, I'll probably get this all wrong, I'm a little dyslexic. And um, it ended over here. <laughs> so that's that. My friend Jim was trying to help me. I should have asked him to get me uh, that paper out of my backpack. I almost did. And then I was like, I'm going to do it myself. And uh, that did not work well. Um, a little, I was slightly embarrassed for that when that happened, and I missed part of the question in, in there. But um, that's what happened. So next time I'll I'll remember that because I made a mistake this time. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say for now. Thank you for watching. Um, my friend Jim just made a uh, arrow to. I mean, he made his own satellite antenna out of tape measure. Jim, can I show you to the camera? Oh no, you can stay there. Can I just show you? Yeah. So he got a uh, tape measure antenna, made a tape measure antenna that works on two and 70 centimeters on the same elements, which is uncommon, or wouldn't, you wouldn't think so, but it does work. He only has to receive on, on 70 centimeters with SO50, that's the satellite he's working. And yeah, are you getting it, Jim? Not at all. Okay, do you want to try my radio instead? No. Okay. Like, I mean, you know, my handheld, just plug it in. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all the um, setup I have over here. Um, try not to shake this too much. Got complaints about that in the past. Anyway, there's the view. Probably going way too fast. Videoing or something like that. But, um, it is what it is. So. This is my radio, it's a Kenwood TM261A uh, mobile radio, it runs off 12 volts, 13.8 volts, and I've got it hooked up to a sealed lead acid battery, which came out of a UPS, a universal, or no, uninterruptible power supply, and I'm using my uh, smartphone to record the uh, screen of that, because I like to crop that into the, into the video that I will inevitably make of this contact, including the part where I fell. And this is a little, uh, I think it's called a bunny tail or some sort of bunny cover on the microphone there. And I've got it taped down because it's so windy out here. And then I have a voice recorder hooked up to that, recording that. And I just got this new um, Zoom audio recorder, which I'm really excited about because I used to use a, a laptop to record the audio from the radio. And that's what this is for. I'm recording the audio from the radio. So I have a cable inside the radio hooked up directly to the speaker and the reason I do that is because the external out which is over here behind here if I hook um, anything into that it cuts off the I guess did I say external it cuts off the internal speaker and I, I'd like to be able to have that on so I can hear it and let other people hear it if they want to and um, and I use the headphones so I could hear the signal and that's great it comes right out of here you can monitor the um, recording and that way I can hear the slight hiss as the signal goes down and then I can adjust the antenna and this is the printout of the questions and you can see that I missed like the first five um, part of that was probably because the, the pass started early 
and I missed the first minute of the pass because we're further west and just we couldn't pick it up. And then of course I missed one of these questions when I dropped everything and had to put the antenna down. And this is my compass, and that's a good compass. I used to use a smaller one, and this one's bigger, and I like it better. <laughs> and this is the the past details. Um, you can see I have Bunker Hill written on the top of the first one because that's where the school is located, Bunker Hill, Indiana. And you can see it started at 11:52 with 52 seconds, and it was at and that's zero degrees on the left. Peak elevation was 86 degrees, so it basically went straight over them, and that's at 11:58, and then it ended at. 1203 and then I have mine over here to compare so you can see the difference in time so 1152 52 start for Bunker Hill for us it was 1153 44 and that's uh, a little over a minute so and for mine I printed out a lot more information because I needed to know more than I needed to know about the Bunker Hill one I needed to know the azimuth which is on the right there 257 degrees and then west southwest just for reference I also print out the 10 degree point just for um, kind of keeping track of it and knowing where I should be based on the time. And then the peak elevation, 23 degrees, uh, you can see. And then the 10 degree after, after it's going down. And then the final uh, zero degree. So that's that. Um, and of course I use the compass to figure out those directions. And um, what I do is when I come out here, I figure out you know where it is, 257 degrees, and I set my compass to whatever I'm looking for. You can see that I had it set to 39 degrees for the last, let's see if I can zoom out. Maybe I can just use manual focus on that. So I apologize for speaking real fast, so I'm just kind of excited. So yeah, manual focus is a little better. Um, so it ended at 39 degrees azimuth, so I set that. And one thing I learned is that, well, I guess I knew that, but I just had to learn it more specifically. I knew that, um, north is magnetic north is not the same as actual north so for this it depends on where you are and I looked it up for where I am and it's actually um, about eight degrees so I usually do this here you can see that's um straight and then there's five and then there's ten so I just watch it when it's right there and then I know um, which direction to point and then I basically um, Kind of hold it like this and line it up with my body and then uh once i get that figured out i basically look up see what it's pointing at and uh i move the thing the compass around a little bit but um basically what i found was that it was that post right there and where that yeah that post right there in the middle and then the other trash mountain across the way top of that so that's where i knew it ended and i did the same thing for the peak elevation and it was basically where the right support for that bench is and then over the little ridge there and when it ended I knew or when it began I, I looked that up originally and it was the right post of this bench as well and so that's that all right that's it thank you for watching this is John Breyer KG4 AKV 73